Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be implementing the final operation for our transformation class, and that is scaling. So just like translation and rotation, this is going to be a vector 3f called scale. And this time I'm going to remember to initialize it, so there we go. And of course, just like before, I want to generate getters and setters, so just generate getters and setters at the very end. And there. And also, just like before, I'm going to be implementing one extra method to heaking in float x, y, and z, just in case I don't have a vector on hand that represents it. So, and it's just going to set a scale to a new vector 3 of x, y, and z. So there. With that done, really, all that, needs, that I really need now is I need to create the actual scale matrix in the transformation. So it's going to be a matrix 4f scale matrix, which is a new matrix 4F, and you guessed it, just like with translation and rotation, I'm going to create a convenience method in our matrix class to initialize a scale matrix. So I'm actually going to copy... yeah, I'll copy the... I'll copy the translation method, actually, because this actually isn't too far off from what I'm going for going to change the x, y, and z to 0, 0, 0 for now. So this is the identity matrix right here. And I'm going to change it to init scale. So, first off, let's calculate the final x component of this. So, essentially, we want our original x component multiplied by however much we're deciding to scale it by, which is taken in as this x value. So, this row calculates the final x component, and right now it's saying we want one of whatever x component there is, so one times the existing x component, none of the existing y component, none of the existing z component, and none of the existing w component. So if we want to increase the x by however much we passed in, it's really not that much harder than you probably think it is. We want to replace this one with x, because that'll tell us, hey, we want our original x component times whatever our scale value for x is, and then add nothing from the rest components. So really, that's all there is to this. Just replace this one with y, because we want whatever y there... We want our... hang on. No, we want our existing y times whatever our scale value is, and we don't want to bother with any of the existing components, because then that'd be doing more computation, and we just want to scale it. And finally, for z, we want whatever our z scale amount is, times our existing z value, and none of the remaining x, y, and z components. And w can just stay the same. We don't need to worry about that. So yeah, that initializes the scale matrix. So I'm going to do matrix 4f dot init scale with sca scale dot get x, scale dot get y, and scale dot get z. And finally, I'm going to apply scale. Now, I actually want to apply scale, first of all, before any of these other matrices. So, I'm going to do rot rotation matrix dot mol by scale matrix. And because of the order of multiplication, that'll apply scale matrix first. So, first off, it'll put it at whatever size it is. Then it'll perform the rotation, which is good, because that way it's still rotating around the center of itself. And then, finally, it'll move it into position, which is good, because then it already has... It's already at its final rotation and scale, so I won't get weird artifacts like scaling actually moves it further away, or rotating actually rotates it around the origin, or any weird things like that. It gets sort of what we expect from the transformation by doing it in this order. So yeah, and that really completes the transformation system. So yeah, let's test it out. I'm going to go up here. I've already initialized transform, so really I guess it's just set scale. I'll get rid of these for now. I'll do transform.setScale. Oh, actually, you know, I'll just create this temporary float value called sign. Set that equal to float math.sign of temp. I should actually just call it sign temp. That's a little more descriptive. There we go. And if I'll stop lagging, there we go. That, then I'll replace it here and here as well. I'm going to set scale to sine temp, sine temp, and sine temp. So I'll just do a complete 3D uniform scale. And, yeah, and I'm applying the whole transformation there, so let's just see what happens. If I, oh, save, of course. 
Boom. Doing a scale. Scales back down. And there we go. And if our whole transformation system is working properly, then I should be able to perform rotation operations and translation operations at the same time and still get meaningful results. So let's see what happens. So yeah, it's moving left and right. It's doing a full rotation. And yeah, it's scaling a long way. So there you go. Our transformation class is effectively complete. We've got our complete translation working, complete 3D translation, even though I'm not using it right now, so we can place any object we want, any mesh we create, at any point we want in 3D space, which is excellent. We have full rotation, so we can rotate to any orientation we can imagine in 3D space, which is also excellent. And finally, we can make objects any scale we want, so if things are out of proportion, we can get them precisely the scale and proportion we want them to be. So our transformation system is complete. That's a huge part of the 3D engine right here, believe it or not. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we'll be moving on from our translation system, or er, well, transformation system, and be doing some more interesting things with our 3D engine. So thank you, and see you then.